What up, peoples? How's it going, YouTube land? I figure I'll just hit the record button and start recording since I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about. I sat here for a couple of minutes like, well, what am I even going to make a video about? It's like, well, if I don't make one, then I'll just... I hear screaming kids, but it's a good scream. I've, uh, I haven't had much time lately, but the reason I haven't uploaded in a week or so, and uh, I'm sure nobody noticed, <laughs> it's always one of those things as a YouTuber. When you don't upload for a while, you realize that it, you do it more for yourself than for anyone else, because people are like, oh, you were gone? You know, it's like, <laughs> I've been making videos for however long now, and it's like, I haven't uploaded for about a week, and, and in the last couple of years, I... I mean, I've uploaded videos for the last seven years every day, pretty much. Except for a couple times when I've actually said, hey, I'm taking a week off. And it was actually, I had to force myself to take time off, because I like YouTube. I really like sharing my info. Well, I used to, anyway, until what happened recently. But, I mean, I still do. It's like, the whole thing with the censorship, that's why I haven't been able to upload. YouTube gave me two strikes. Uh, against my account, and one of those strikes was for a DMT video where I just discussed DMT and harmaline, harmala seeds, uh, just me talking. And the other one was a a, a video that I'd already erased. So I, I because after the first strike, I went back and deleted like a hundred videos about psychedelics and other things just to be safe. And then I get a strike like a week later for one of those. So at that point, you can't upload. And so I haven't been able to upload. And I was like, that's cool. I, st I went to my other channel, which I, I revamped. And it used to be my cannabis channel, because a few years ago I was really into growing weed. And uh, I just lost interest in it. And it's not that I lost interest. I still love cannabis, and I love growing it. It's just I don't want to make a channel about it and put myself at risk. And, and, and you know, But it had a lot of subscribers, so I thought, well, I'll just change it over to my Carpo's Schoolie. And, uh, because we just bought a school bus, for those who don't know already, and, um, a short bus, okay, with a lift and everything, and we removed the lift, and I won't go into details, that's for the other channel, because otherwise I'll sit and talk about my bus, because that's what I've been excited about. My, uh, oldest son, who's 23, he's out there right now with the grinder, grinding down all the rust, um, as reluctant as we were, we tore the floor up, it had all these brackets and all kinds of crap we had to remove, to get the rubber floor and then the plywood up just for a few rust spots but I think it's worth it so we're grinding all that down we're gonna primer it we're gonna seal it put a foam down and the whole the whole thing you know nice flooring and I don't have the time to do it because right now I'm so busy I've got uh, the bus that I want to work on but I also have my you know the, the herb business which now is starting to actually build up a little bit of steam which is great for me I mean I, and people will say, hey, you know, that's what people want, right? Business. Yeah, of course, but I also want my time. It's one, been one of those things where when you don't have anything to do, you're like, oh, this is kind of boring. And the other day I thought, I haven't been bored in years. And that's partially because I have kids, of course, but uh, there was a time when my, ba when my kids were young, before my third child, where my oldest was pe over, older, over 18 and my youngest was small enough to sleep a lot. And I had time for myself. I could come out and do YouTube videos. I had time to uh, do things, and I have this energy to do things, but nothing to do. And now I don't have the energy to get the things done I need to get done. It's pretty interesting. My, my children, by the way, are 5, 8, and 23. So it's a huge gap. So my oldest son, who is helping us now, we're going to take this bus and convert it into a home an RV, and I'm giving myself two months because I really want to make sure that I stick to it and do do this, you know. Um, but I have to work late hours because, you know, I take care of my customers in the daytime and once mailing hours are over, you know, I can go out and work on that for a while. And uh, it's really hard to make time for yourself, for your family, and for everything else when you're trying to live in the modern world. It's crazy. So, uh... I want to kind of uh, back up a little bit on this issue about censorship. It's really interesting because I don't know what YouTube is doing, but I want I want people to know, my subscribers to know, that I'm not angry at YouTube, and I'm not one of those, um, I'm, I'm not going to come across as being frustrated with uh, 
let's put it this way. I think YouTube, I believe I read the statistics a while back, and this was back then, a year ago or so, uh, that, that there are something like 50,000 hours of YouTube uploaded every minute. I mean, I don't know if that's true. It was an amazing amount, maybe 5,000 hours a minute. I don't know. But it's more than any one person could ever go through and look at. You can imagine all the uploaders. I mean, even if you're uploading a 20-minute video a day, I mean, think about how many millions of user users there are. It's insane. So uh, that means that they have to use algorithms. And what happened is YouTube turned into a business. They wanted to make more money. They started going through Google, or Google bought them, I guess, is what it was, right? And then, uh, you know, now they want to put ads on everybody's stuff. So the people like me who don't use ads and just wanted to use YouTube to share my opinions, I kind of get thrown into the mix. And the algorithms pick up my videos about drugs, psychedelics, or whatnot. Even saying that word, psychedelics, is picked up. People don't realize that. They think, oh, just title your, your video about, you know, snorting fuzzy kittens. And nobody will know it's about cocaine. You know, uh, the algorithms today pick up everything. Every that's how automatic subtitles work. You know, it's the same as you dictating to your phone. If you think about it, if you hit the little microphone button and you speak and it types and it's very accurate, well, it's the, it's the same way with uh, the way we speak on our videos and it picks up the emphasis and tones in our voice. And you know, I don't know how I feel about that because I understand they're trying to get rid of crap they don't want on their platform and they have that right because it is a business. YouTube, you know, it's not about free speech. When people say that they're trying to stifle free speech, some of the people who I've heard complaining about this haven't even got strikes. They were just demonetized and they're crying like babies on YouTube, making like, you know, videos every week about how, oh, YouTube keeps demonetizing me. You know, shut the fuck up. You know, if you've got important videos, then get your money through Patreon or elsewhere. I mean, I don't make money. It's not like I'm out here making these new newscasts, but I'm not making any money on this. You know, I like making YouTube videos, but some people, there is an entitled YouTube community that thinks, that grew up, and I hate to say the word millennials, but that seems to be the group, uh, and they feel entitled, and they feel like I should be able to make a living on YouTube. And I'm like, that's complete bullshit. Get a real job. You know, I'm sorry, but at the same time, to be fair, and I know somebody who's probably, like, you know, at least a few of you are like, well, fuck you, man, I want to make a living on YouTube. You can if you make good content, but just remember what we complained about for so long in the mainstream, things like the real world and whatnot, and our excuse is that, well, we're making our own reality shows and we're showing our own lives, that's true, but is that really worth ad paying, letting advertisers cash in on you so you can get paid through them because it's supporting the machine, you know, the monstrosity. That's the way I see it, you know. I'm very opposed to what it's becoming and it's the Orwellian type of atmosphere, which is basically what algorithms are. It's Orwellian. It's pre-crime. This is censoring people's comments and videos before they're even looked at by a real human being. This is the first phase of AI, is allowing computers to dictate which videos should be flagged, which is what they did to me and several other channels. Some of them were shut down completely. And uh, <laughs> there's two types of channels that were hit. One was extreme right-wing fanaticism, or even some extreme left-wing stuff. And the other was drug content. So there were two different atmospheres, two different groups of people complaining, and I'm not going to sit here and say, well, since I'm not right-wing, fuck them, they should be banned. I don't think that's fair at all, and if that's what's going on, that's bullshit, too. I'm imagining that they picked out certain extreme conversational subjects that they don't want to deal with anymore, and many of those just happen to be on those extremely conservative-type channels. Whether it was aimed at them, I don't know. And the same thing is whether it was aimed at small YouTubers who talk about psychedelics, I don't know. Maybe they were just trying to cut down on the amount of people who were talking about getting high. But I've never shown myself sitting here getting, you know, uh, smoking DMT. I just just talking about it. But on the other hand, I have smoked cannabis. 
And that's something, of course, I should be aware of now. So I'm asking, like, what, you know, what are the rules of YouTube? What are the rules of the Internet? You know, I'm not going to have Stockholm Syndrome in here and sit here and be like, well, I've been with YouTube so long, you know, they're my bros. They're just a platform to share my info. And all of you who have subscribed, you know, it is kind of painful to lose your ability to connect with those people, with you guys. And I know a lot of you have your own, you, <laughs> you all have your own lives, but... If you want to subscribe to my other channel, just in case something ever happens to this one, it's called Carpo's Schoolie. That's school with an I-E at the end. And that's my school bus channel. And I'll be using that one to update, if you're interested in the bus thing. But uh, also, I, you know, the reason I chose the name Carpo and stuck with it is because I wanted to be able people to remember me by... A, a, a recognizable name because I met so many Joshes. Let me tell you, every event I go to, there is a Josh or two Joshes or three Joshes. And it's like, why are there always so many Joshes at events? And we always get along. We always end up being friends. You know, there's this weird thing between Joshes, which, unless you're Josh, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I don't know if that goes for other names either, but it's a really weird thing. Um, so I decided to call myself Carpo because I wanted to be able to re have people remember me for being who I am. And uh, Carpo was a name that I selected off the top of my head for a game we played called Zonk, which is a dice game with cannabis. It's basically like 10,000, but you're taking bong hits every thousand points. And uh, there's a lot of strange details and rules about it, but that's another story altogether. Uh, so basically this video is kind of a uh, what's up, how you doing, and uh, this is why I've been gone because of the censorship thing. But I'm also looking to um, kind of expand, talk about <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my bus. Uh, I just want, you know, I wanted to mention when I said that earlier, to the millennial thing, of course I didn't want to offend any millennials out there, and of course if you're too sensitive and you don't understand that, then fuck you anyway. No offense. Kidding. Um, <laughs> I was watching a show yesterday my wife was showing me, she found it was about this guy who was roasting people who, he, he, he was a van life dude who lived in his van, and he was roasting these what he called the, the, you know, the millennial, you know, they basically, the people who do what I'm doing, they buy a school bus, you know, and it's like a couple, and then they uh, make really nice edited videos, and they, sh they share the experience, and they end up making a lot of money off of the ads, you know, because they put it on YouTube, and in the end, then they start sharing their experience of traveling around, and then they start getting support, and all of a sudden they think that, their subscribers on YouTube should support their road trips or should support them to buy a new engine or a new you know, truck, a new van. Like the one he was roasting, he was like, look at these people. They bought a Dodge, a Sprinter, you know, a $50,000 fucking truck and uh, expect their people to pay for a new engine they need that was like 15 grand, they were saying. And then they were saying they might not even need an engine. And it's just, you know... It's just, you see certain people, and you're like, you've never worked a day in your fucking life, you know? I'm a firm believer in getting your hands dirty. If you haven't cut yourself up, I mean, <laughs> I've got a couple fucking bruises already from that, that bus out there, but, you know, if you haven't really put your, your, you know, put your hands to work... You know, just asking for money, I mean, that may work in the short term, but I guarantee you, I don't care what anyone says, if you get old and you've never actually done labor, you will regret it. You will regret that. I've talked to so many people who get into their 20s and they're like, fuck that, I don't need to work, I'm going to do it easy. Then in their 30s, they're like, dude, I really wish I would have a trade, I really wish I knew what I was doing. And, and you know, I'm grateful. Because I have a trade, I'm a carpenter, and I've worked on cars enough to be able to at least do simple work, and I've done a little bit of everything, metal work, you know, um, uh, stone work, you know, jewelry, all that different stuff, that's one thing, but cars, working on engines and, and, and building cabinets, stuff like that, it's something that I feel proud of. And I was thinking the other day about pride, and it, it was really going through my head, like, you know, is pride a bad thing? And they say pride comes before the fall. I say, you know, 
That's what you say if you've never been proud of anything. Because if you've done good things and you've worked hard, you know, and I've gotten my hands dirty, I've busted up my knuckles, I've, I've been in pain and messed my back up probably permanently for life doing carpentry, but I gained a skill. And as I say that, I hear my oldest son out there, I can hear the grinder going. He's still grinding away, and I've kind of let him loose with the tools. I came out there this morning, he was using the sawzall, and I kind of, I, I told him no. He was underneath trying to use the sawzall for the first time, and I was like, no, 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 no. Wait till I'm there, because I learned how to use tools over a period of years. It took a lot of hands-on experience with these tools to know what I know. And I realized today in my muscle memory and how... You know, being able to use these tools can be so beneficial. So, I guess I wanted to get that out there. There's nothing wrong with pride. If you're proud, you know, and if you don't have any skills, I guarantee you, you will want, you'll want some sort of skill, you know. And I don't think that, I don't know, There's. it's interesting. I'm not saying that a person has to do manual labor, necessarily, to feel good. Of course, that's a huge part of it for me. But, uh, at least be innovative and do your own work. You know, if you do IT or some sort of a technical trade, or if you're even a gamer, as long as you're working hard towards something, you know, then so be it, you know. I mean, I support whoever wants to be anything. My youngest, my middle son, he wants to be a gamer. That's his dream. He's only eight now. That'll change, I'm sure. But, um, you know, he's really into the games he plays, and I know the hand-eye coordination he gets from playing them is amazing. So, uh... You know, just like me playing Mario Brothers, Asteroids. So, um, I don't know. As I, as I go now, I bid you all farewell. I'll sip this uh, orange juice, which I shouldn't even say what's in there because it might be edited for censorship reasons. I guess that's the world we live in. We've got to be... I don't know. I'll just leave it at this. If you don't adapt, then you fade away and everyone else surpasses. It, it, everyone else moves on. It, the world has its rules. You either play by them or you sit and bitch in the corner. I've decided in my life I will not bitch in the corner. If I want something to be changed, I'll try to change it. If it doesn't change, fuck it. Move on. And I think that's the way it should be with you know all, all these you know, YouTube censorship things, it's, if that's what's really going on, so be it. It's their platform, let them do what they do. I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> give it give it any more energy, so. Uh, now that I can upload again, I'll be talking to you all soon, and uh, I bid you all farewell, and it was good to uh, be able to make another video and ramble about bullshit again. So, peace, talk to you all soon, have a great night.